So I've gone over the Julius Jones case multiple different times on this channel, needless to say. If you've been following me over the past month, you obviously know this. And the reason why I was covering this story so much is because leading up to November 18th, which was the scheduled execution day, there was a huge push to get this 100% guilty man off of the murder of Paul Howe. For those of you who are unaware, Julius Jones, in order to steal Paul Howe's Suburban, walked up to him and without saying a single word, shot him once in the head in order to steal his car. When his two daughters and sister, who were also in the car and witnessed this horrific murder, decided to flee for their lives, Jones fired upon them as they entered the house. This is unambiguously what happened. There is no question in my mind, and there is no question in anybody's logical mind that these are the facts of the case. Recently, and by recently, I mean a couple of years ago, the Jones defense team requested DNA testing on a bandana indisputably worn by the shooter at the time of the murder. The other thing that we are trying to do is DNA testing. The police never tested the red bandana that the gunman was wearing. In forensics, we've been very successful with bandanas. One of the things that you'd want to do is check for saliva. Your skin cells sloughing off, especially in an adrenaline-fueled situation. If we can get the bandana tested, it might prove that Julius was not the shooter. This bandana, of course, the murder weapon was wrapped in, and it was in Julius Jones's bedroom. And according to Julius Jones himself, as recently as two weeks ago, he didn't wear any bandanas at the time. I did not commit that crime. I did not wear bandanas back then. Now, of course, after the DNA was tested, DNA testing asked by the Jones defense team, this affirmed the verdict of Julius Jones's guilt. It proved beyond any shadow of a doubt that Julius Jones was in fact wearing the bandana, thus he was the shooter. And the other suspect that they tried to pin the murder on did not match the DNA profile. And Jones's match was incredibly strong. The odds of another African-American contributing to this DNA sample were one in a hundred and 10 million considering there were only 35 million african americans in the united states of america at the time julius jones murdered paul howe for there to be another match we would need about four times the population and for a member of that population to have access to julius jones's bedroom so for all intents and purposes jones did this despite what they say about the description despite what they say about all the other issues that they claim are with the case it's just not true it's nonsensical and yet he was commuted. So, of course, when I heard the news, I was incredibly angry. And we're going to get into what actually was put forward by Governor Kevin Stitt. We're going to explain why it's actually not as bad as I initially thought. But we do have a sponsor. It's Health with Justice. I'm not going to do a comedic transition. We're just going to roll into it and catch you guys on the other side. We are only just now starting to understand the powerful anti-aging effects of taking collagen. I myself and thousands of others have personally experienced these effects firsthand. But there's a little bit of a secret, something that you might not realize. I don't just go to the store and buy myself some crappy collagen off the shelf. I go to health with justice. This special collagen provides five key collagen types from four unique sources. In short, this blend supercharges the effects that typical collagen would have. The result? Firstly, my skin looks and feels as soft as itty bitty baby Sean's skin felt. Second, my nails are so elite that my girlfriend is a bit jealous. And thirdly, and this was the most unexpected, I have more energy to go about my day. Just look at the level of enthusiasm I have in this video you're watching right now. But guess what? The benefits are not just for me, they are in fact for thee. Go to healthwithjustice.com and for you, this month, you will get our very special Black Friday 51% off your order of this very special collagen powder. Trust me, if you get it, your skin, your hairs, and your nails will thank me. That's healthwithjustice.com, link in the pinned comment and in the bio. Now, despite the fact that evidence was overwhelming proving Julius Jones's guilt, not just the witnesses, not just the DNA evidence, not just the fantastic description given by Megan Toby, but independent witnesses spotted Jones leaving after the house from the ice cream shop about 15 minutes before the murder in pursuit of the house gold suburban of course he ended up following them to the home before he eventually killed him in front of his children for an suv that street value 
value was $4,000. Not to mention Julius Jones's long criminal history of very similar crimes, including two very similar carjackings that very week. One that he was convicted of, he pled guilty of, and indisputably he did it. But yet, there was a campaign. There were people advocating for his innocence. And it wasn't just far-left race-baiting psychopaths who see a person murdered by somebody like Julius Jones and think, you know what would be a great idea? Let me smear the family and smear the entire community as evil white racists because they claim a black man came into this white neighborhood and murdered this white person. The victim was white, uh, middle class, gunned down by a young African-American male in a wealthy suburb of Oklahoma City. Edmund was over 85% white back in the 90s. When integration went full swing, many whites left Oklahoma City. And Edmund was one of the areas they moved to in record numbers. It wasn't filled with gangs or filled with crime. People moved to Edmund to live a safe life. We can go to Edmond and protect our families. Possible gang elements coming to Edmond and murdering a successful white man. It had everybody on edge. There was a fear at that time that was almost palpable of dangerous young black youth. The feeling was if we don't act swiftly and if justice isn't severe, we're all in danger. Now, what's insane about this, of course, and I've highlighted this in many, many videos, is that they're claiming that it's racist to accuse a black man of coming into a white neighborhood and murdering a white man in front of his children, but their hypothesis is that it was not this black guy, Julius Jones, it was this other black guy, Chris Jordan. So the entire premise of where the racism is in this case is something that both sides are alleging. They're just arguing over which black guy actually did it. And the prosecution picked the black guy that's DNA matched. And of course, the person that had independent witnesses that testified that they were in fact the owner of the gun, including Julius Jones's girlfriend who ties the gun to him, this gun that Jones claims he never saw, just like he never saw the bandana, never wore a bandana, that has his DNA on it. But unfortunately, a lot of people saw it differently, so much so that 7 million people signed their signature to free Julius Jones. And this wasn't just because of far left activists. As we talked about in a previous video, CPAC, their founder and the organization, got behind Julius Jones, even though it was clear and obvious that people like Matt Schlapp, the founder of CPAC, knew literally nothing about the case and were only giving you one version of events. Listen to Matt Schlapp talk about how DNA has cleared some of these people, clearly indicating that he didn't bother to look into the DNA evidence associated that proved Julius Jones was in fact guilty. So as an organization, CPAC has always weighed in on the side that there are cases when it's prudent and appropriate to use capital punishment and for capital punishment to be legal. Of course, the whole question about capital punishment has been reexamined by a lot of conservatives in the, in the era where we have so much scientific uh, greater tools, including on DNA uh, testing, etc. Now, a lot of people will tell you that Julius Jones has an alibi. The family says that Julius Jones was at home eating spaghetti and a big birthday cookie. This is the ridiculous alibi that has been refuted, disputed, and debunked multiple different times. But let's roll the clip of them talking about the big cookie and how they were just eating little Julius Jones's cookie. I remember Julius had a cookie. But it was a big cookie by like that. Uh, it's Julius's birthday cookie. A little earlier, Antonio and me kept going into the kitchen and taking pieces of the cookie. Maybe one slice was left when I was like, man, what the hell happened to my cookie? Oh, man, he was so mad. And my sister was exceptionally quiet. Jesus is waiting for mom to come home. It's like almost 10. As soon as she pulled up, he waiting at the door. Mom, mom, they ate my cookie, they ate my cookie. We didn't know, but the man in that minute had just been killed. I'm in the I was eating with my family, and I just figured the truth would come out, and then we let me go home, because... Now again, I've proven this alibi false multiple different times. The Jones family tried to solicit 
a neighbor and friend, Brenda Cujo, to verify this alibi because there was, in fact, a birthday celebration. However, when Cujo looked through her belongings and found a receipt for Kinkos, the reason this is important is because she says she was at Kinkos before going to the Jones family home for this birthday celebration. This dated the celebration the day before the murder, thus making it not a valid alibi. So the Jones family has been lying about this alibi for years. Okay, I want to clarify one thing. When we talked about the family alibi and the reasons for not calling it, when you spoke about Miss Cujo last time, you said that she knew it wasn't the date of the murder because she had gone to Kinko's beforehand. Did she have any proof of that? She did. She had a receipt showing the date and time she'd been to Kinko's, and it was the only time she had been during that week. So, uh, in a way, because the Jones story lined up so perfectly with hers, we absolutely knew for certain that she was incorrect. Uh, and also, I would uh, refer you back to the 311 hearing on the testimony that was elicited uh, with regard to that alibi. It was completely bogus and no, no competent or any, I don't think any incompetent lawyer would put that alibi on. It just didn't, uh, it didn't work. It was false. And it would have been a fraud upon the court. But it actually gets much, much worse because remember, the Jones defense team now was claiming that Christopher Westside Jordan was the man behind the trigger who committed this murder. But somebody recently sent me an article from the Oklahoman at the time that had interviews from members of the family talking about the family alibi. And of course, this alibi has changed multiple different times over the years, including this one crucial change for those of you who still believe that this big cookie story, this ridiculous sequence of events that flies in the face of DNA evidence, surveillance video, and other witness testimony is somehow still true, is that the Jones family actually was saying that Jones and Jordan were both present playing Monopoly and cards at the time. So the Jones family, in their infinite immorality, is not only lying today and consciously and knowingly lying today. They threatened Brenda Cujo when she brought forward the receipt that disproved their lie. You don't threaten people if you're telling the truth. We're lying even back then, even for Christopher Jordan, because they were not aware at the time that Christopher Jordan had already churned state's evidence against Julius Jones for a lesser sentence so they know for a fact that this is untrue again three days after the murder they were lying for both jones and jordan and even according to their theory of defense it was christopher jordan who was the shooter but in this article they're quoted as saying that christopher jordan and julius jones were a part of this monopoly party and doing the big cookie and all that other nonsense so despite overwhelming evidence of Julius Jones's guilt, despite overwhelming evidence of his family lying, people in the media, celebrities, all these different people still insist that Julius Jones is innocent. So you can see why I was initially pissed off when I saw the headline that Jones got clemency. You can see why I was angry, and we're gonna go into why I've calmed down since then, but I wanna go over one more thing that actually brought me a little bit of joy, and that was this MSNBC segment, a Joy Reid segment, where they played what they thought at the time was Julius Jones's last audio interview a telephone interview which by the way he wasn't allowed to give so still committing crimes still breaking rules up until the point where he thought he was going to be executed but you get a peek into his mindset when he believed that he was actually up for execution what do you want to say to paul howell's family i love them i love them and i forgive them they hate me they don't they don't really know why but at, 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 the, at the appointed moment they will know the truth and I hope one day that they open up their eyes and see the truth. But at this point, man, I hope they heal first. Out of all things, I hope they find healing. I've never had any ill will towards them. I don't wish them ill will. Um, I pray for them constantly. So first of all, that first section of audio I absolutely hate. As we've gone over multiple different times, Jones is 100% responsible for the murder of Paul Howe. He pulled the trigger. It's all on him. And he's been sending letters harassing Megan Toby, trying to get her to change her testimony. And this whole campaign has led to a targeted harassment campaign of the Howe family, which is absolutely gross and disgusting. So all that about how he loves them and all that, he hasn't said one word about the Howes up until his pardon and parole hearing because he realized, his lawyers realized, once people started advocating for the other side, once the house started coming out front, that Jones should show or at least feign a little bit of sympathy for the person that he murdered that they're trying to get him off for murdering. So I absolutely hated that part, but this next part 
absolutely glorious in every way. What do you want to say to your mom? I'm blessed that I was able to come into this world to you. Be raised by you and my father. I mean, to have the brother and sister I have, I don't really have the words. I wish I was always here to protect them, comfort them, lift them up. But hopefully, man, you know, if I'm not here, they will remember, you know what I'm saying, that that was always my intention. You know, I'm, I'm sorry I was a bad shit. I'm sorry, I'm sorry I made mistakes. But you know, I'm not a killer. I'm not a murderer. So first of all, I want to thank Devin Tracy for bringing this clip to my attention. I wouldn't have even thought to watch MSNBC for this update. And I do totally agree with his analysis. If you want to see his analysis, go to censored.tv, subscribe, use promo code AIU so that he can get a portion of the money. Don't make Gavin McGinnis a bigger millionaire. Make Devin a bigger thousandaire by actually going for him because he was on this case before I was and honestly really helped in the background of Gavin getting my videos out there and making them as accurate as possible. And his assessment of this, where Jones breaks down, is pretty accurate because he starts apologizing, but he starts crying during his apology, but it doesn't really make sense for him to be crying right there at that point during his apology. What's happening here is Jones at least in his head, is starting to acknowledge his guilt in the murder of Paul Howe, in my opinion, and in Devin's opinion. You can hear it in his voice, and that's why he backpedals and says, I'm not a killer, I'm not a murderer, because he's trying to say, oh, crap, in my brain, I got too close to admitting it, and it's really ridiculous. And to be fair, I would be upset if I was Jones, too. I mean, he got to feel up until this moment, that fear of losing his life that he inflicted on Paul Howe and his family. Jones, for a second, and I'm not a vengeful person, but there's a reason that this is well-deserved, felt what he inflicted on another person, and I'm absolutely here for it, and I'm so glad it was recorded. I'm so glad we have this audio so that we know that Julius Jones, like the coward that he is, the kind of man who would shoot a father for opening his door when his kids were in the back, is still a coward up until the moment where he was going to face his maker. I absolutely love everything about this clip, and again, not a vengeful person, but this person deserves it, not just for the murder, not just for viciously firing upon the house children and his sister as they left but for his unmitigated campaign of lies dishonesty and harassment against the Howe family post him committing this murder yeah joey um this is one of the most heartbreaking stories that i have ever covered um and you know i just watched your segment with nicole hannah jones and kind of talking about the history of black children and as a black mother i feel so much empathy for his mother and as a black mother now as much as hearing the fear in julius jones's voice is so well deserved and it actually did uplift my spirit even as a non-ventral person Person, this part brought me down for humanity all over again because this woman is talking about how she empathizes with Julius Jones's mother because she's also a black mother. She couldn't even leave it at just being a mother. She had to racialize it. Imagine if when I talked about the house, I talked about how my white half of the family is what's empathizing with the house. It's absolutely ridiculous that this open racism, and again, this campaign is about racism. The only reason they care is because Julius Jones's black and he murdered a white person is just allowed to be out and it's totally normalized and you have joy reed nodding along to it and it's just insane because the people that you should empathize with obviously are the how family you can't empathize with a parent or as a mother having to tell your daughters that they have to say goodbye to their father when you know they're gonna die listen to rachel how recall the position that her mother was in when they realized that paul Howe was not going to pull through julius jones's gunshot over again, a car that he would have netted $4,000 that he had, had split with his partner, so about $2,000 for. I remember going to the hospital and the majority of my family was already there. I remember the doctors telling my mom, sister, and I that we could go see my dad. We get into the hospital room and my dad is lying there in the hospital bed with a hospital gown on and what looked like a shower cap over his head and all these tubes and IVs running through his arms. My mom looked at my sister and I, nine and seven at the time, and said, now girls, your dad can hear you. He just can't talk back to you right now. So if there's anything you want to say or any prayers you want to say to him, you can say them now. I always, I always think about my mom when I think about this night, what it must have been like for her trying to tell her children that their father is dying, especially after her children had witnessed the incident. I remember grabbing my dad's hand and saying, 
Dear God, if my dad makes it to heaven, please give me a sign. I guess looking back, a part of me already knew he was gone. It's very telling that this racist that's just allowed to promulgate this propaganda on MSNBC didn't even think to contact the house, has no interest in the house, and doesn't even talk about, hey, I would probably empathize a little bit as a mother with a woman who had to tell her children that the father of them was going to die and for them to say their goodbyes at age nine and seven. But instead, because she's a black mother, somehow she only has empathy for Jones's mother, who we just proved since 1999 has been lying about the alibi trying to get murderers off scot-free for this crime. Now again, I'm trying not to get too worked up over this, but it's actually really pissing me off the more I think about it, how nefarious and nasty these people are in this fraudulent, wrongful conviction movement. Again, just ridiculous in every way. But we did get some good news. At first, I thought this was going to be a 50-50 compromise that would ultimately lead to Julius Jones being let out of prison. But after reaching out to the Justice for Paul Howe Instagram page, they informed me that through a cork in the Oklahoma Constitution, once Kevin Stitt made the decision to commute Julius Jones's sentence to life without the possibility of parole, that's done. It's set in stone. And I heard it from two lawyers that practice in the state of Oklahoma the same day. They can explain it so you guys can understand it. This was on the Roberta Glass podcast. She's been 100% on point on the Jones thing. You should subscribe to her channel. We've never dealt with a situation like this, but reading in the Oklahoma Constitution, Article 6, Section 10, uh, first of all, there was a couple things that I noticed that the pardon and parole board didn't actually have the authority to make the recommendation for life with the possibility of parole. And the constitutional um, article specifically says that you cannot parole someone that's been sentenced to death or life without the possibility of parole. So my reading of the constitution, unless there's a referendum to change the constitution is he's done. Uh, he's getting life without and the situation is over. But I would find it even I think what people were thinking was that typically a governor can come in and erase previous governor's executive orders, much like a president. However, there's a specific constitutional uh, article addressing uh, clemency and commutation. So I think that they're done. Before being informed of this, I thought that this was a choice between Julius Jones eventually getting out and becoming a millionaire and Julius Jones paying for his crime. But I'm in for this. And because the Howe family released a statement that they were happy that Governor Kevin Stitt affirmed the guilt of Julius Jones, he didn't play games, he didn't mince words in this regard, that they, or at least some of them, the ones that I've talked to, I don't want to overstate how many of them that I've talked to, have accepted this premise. They just wanted the guilt to be affirmed, and they just wanted to make sure that Julius Jones wouldn't get out whatever form that takes. And again, this is not representative of all the house or even the majority of the house just the ones that ran the instagram page that actually contacted me and i don't want to give away any names blah 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 you, you guys get the drill and i'm okay with this too because jones is going to be moved into general population he will no longer have all the protection that a death row inmate has and because he's a gang member because he's violent in prison because he's made a lot of enemies getting all this attention it's not going to work out too well for julius jones hopefully so He's going to be in there. He can't, as a condition of this commutation, request any more pardon hearings, any more parole hearings, or anything like that. The state of Oklahoma apparently pays for your appeals when you're on death row. They're cutting him off financially, so he's going to have to finance his own appeals. So all that money that's coming in to the Julius Jones system wasn't even paying for his defense. It was just paying for the propaganda campaign and paying to raise more money. And I'm okay with this outcome. I thought it was a 50-50 split. And I do still think, even though the constitutional thing is there, there is a chance that Jones could get out because if you're alive, you could get out. It's a 90-10 compromise in favor of our side. Now, I don't want to overstate this point, but in the first video we did covering this, I talked about how my video was going to get the most amount of traction out of anybody arguing for Paul Howe's position, for his family's position, for the truth of Julius Jones's guilt. And I just want to say, I think that you, the people out there in the audience, played a major role. I saw you on Twitter. I saw you in the comments of everything. This MSNBC video, look at the comments. It's absolutely terrible. But look at the views to likes. 50,000 views to 500 likes. You know this got ratioed into the ground by people who know the true story. People from my audience. People from Devin's audience. People from Roberta Glass's audience. People who follow the lawyer's 
guns, crime podcast. I'm so sorry I messed that up. Shelly's great. I'm going to leave her links in the description. All of you people have been activated and you've pushed back a multi-million dollar celebrity and athlete driven campaign to the point where they barely got Julius Jones's life. And that was just a couple of hours before. This could have been way worse if it wasn't for the media pressure. It wasn't for the house coming out strong, being brave, standing up to this campaign when they didn't have a sophisticated media operation backing them. Jones likely would have gotten out despite all the facts being on the other side. I mean, we had traitors in the conservative movement like CPAC totally going against reality and backing this criminal, not even bothering to talk to the Howe family. It's absolutely insane. And I think the pressure that you guys put on this, the fact that you made this case matter, not just in this audience, but in every audience of any creator that was telling the truth actually did have an impact and i want to thank you for that don't want to overstate it obviously the house had a huge role in it but yeah that's really how i feel about this instance and we're gonna go on to other cases we're going to circle back in rodney reed because that case is starting to heat up again and reed is also 100 percent guilty the same people are trying to get him out the same media campaign is behind him and we're not gonna let that happen and we're gonna tell politicians like ted cruz who are going soft arguing that rodney reed is innocent that he's dead wrong on this and if he steps out of line we're not going to do business with him we'll never support him we'll never endorse him he should know the facts of the case and stop being weak and trying to cater and pander to these innocent frauds. So yeah, while Jones was commuted and it was an unjustified commutation, according to Oklahoma's constitution, once you're commuted once, you're done and he's not getting out of prison for the foreseeable future. So I'm going to take that as a 90% win, especially after seeing the Howe family statement and they were happy that the governor affirmed the guilt of Julius Jones and the fact that he's going to be cut off, and the fact that you don't have the pressure of the death penalty to gin up hysteria on behalf of him, all these factors are going to lead him to lead a long and miserable life behind bars, and maybe not that long, because he's going to be thrown into general population. But hey, those are just my thoughts. So let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. If you like the video, you can show me by leaving a like. You can subscribe for more content. Follow me on all my social medias. You can support me via the support links in the description box. This has been me talking about Jones's commutation. Till next time.